Hello again everyone, long time no see. So lately I say I mentioned again busy this week and last week. Um, we just came from Davao and we had our batch six of uh, Forex boot camp. Kaya medyo naging sobrang crazy, sobrang hectic. Had to prepare so many things. Kaya last week I was able to trade, pero you know, I wasn't able to focus kasi ganun talaga when you know you're doing something. You just cannot multitask sa trading. It's really impossible to multitask. And you should never ever multitask kung natitrade ka. Kasi if you're gonna trade, focus on trading muna. You know? Because if you multitask, you're not gonna be making very good decisions. So last week sa akin, you know, I made some good decisions. I made some bad ones. Pero at the end of the day, profit is profit. And what I mean about that is, so let's take a look at uh, trading history. On history. So as you can see naman, last week, kumita na ako ng at least 60 pips regardless na may mga minor losses. Pero sa mukha niya, mga minor losses siya. Pero overall, profit pa naman. Pero hindi nga lang kasi nga, you know, I expected more. Pero due to the hecticness ng, ng, ano ko, ng schedule, medyo hindi ko na maximize yung magandang profit. But anyways, it's a whole new week again. Ano ba magandang i-watch out this week? So let's take a look at muna sa calendar, okay? Uh, paano ba tong share Man, it's been so long, I forgot how to share this. <laughs> so check natin yung calendar. Um, for calendar this week, uh, today, Monday, no major news, just a medium news mamaya. Actually, nakalagpas na kasi. That's right here. Kanyang na maga. So, it's a good way to trade tech using with technical analysis kasi kung walang mga news, masarap mag technical, alright? And since the market very calm right now, you're not really going to get much of a market movement. All right. So, but looking at Tuesday, kinabukasan, sa USD, there are major news. But sa mga bootcampers namin, we do not recommend trading on USD right now. Kasi lalo na, um, you guys were taught to use technical analysis. Kasi like, like I said, ang US, very volatile. And pagka may mga news biglang, and daming bigla ang news ng US. So, usually when that happens, tapon yun yung mga technical analysis nyo. Kaya, as much possible, focus mo na kayo sa mga currencies that are not heavily too involved sa mga magugulong market at the moment. Pero, that's kind of impossible kasi, you know, the whole world revolves around the, you know, the overall market like the trade war and Brexit. Pero, we can trade some pairs na medyo kalmado siya. Okay? So, let's take a look. Mga major news natin ay sa may GBP, Salita si you know, Bank of England, Carney, uh, mga ano yan, tanghali. So, this could shift kasi lately ang sobrang bagsak ang GDP. Eh. Daming mga negative news. Tas, kasi anything with the Brexit, it makes the economy very weak kasi ang daming uncertain. Kung uncertain ang isang country, very uncertain ang mga investors. And since uncertain ang investors, there's no clear direction where the market will go. Thus, preventing you know investors from investing in all kinds of businesses, okay? So let's take a look, mga medium news to GBP. JPY, Calmado, very calm, no major news. Same with AUD. Actually, yung AUD nga, medyo malupit yung week nila last week. Talagang nag-cut rate sila, bagsak sila, including yung NZD. Kasi yung AUD at NZD, para silang tandem eh. They rely on each other. So if one falls down, the other one surely to follow. Okay? And Canada. Canada, Actually, ang Canada medyo steady yan eh. Although last week, bigla siyang humina dahil nga sa GDP na mahina yung mga data niya, sa economic data niya. Pero according naman sa mga news, mukha siyang ano, palaban pa naman siya. Hindi siya yung parang magsasabi magkakat ng rate, you know, etc. Yung mga ganun. So, palaban siya. Alright? Then Wednesday, we're gonna be seeing some major news sa US pa rin. See, like I said, on daming news sa US. Kaya, try to avoid the US for any long-term trading. It may be good for scalping, pero to be honest, mas maganda na i-maximize nyo yung trade nyo versus scalping. Kasi scalping, mga target nyo lang is 10 to 5 to 10 tips lang eh per trade. Eh. Medyo nakaka-stressful lang scalping. Okay? Kasi you want trading to be not as stressful as it should be. Kasi once you're stressed, you're gonna be making wrong decisions and you don't want that. Alright? Thursday, we're looking at more major news sa US and we will have some major news sa GBP. Ito yung magiging GDP na malalaman natin. So, according to the forecast, pabagsak siya by 0.3%. So, 
So, titan natin kung to ba yung forecast nila or it may change. All right? And then, meron tayo mga news sa China. Okay? And let's see, keep going in. More news para sa GDP. Talagang Thursday could be a defining moment for GDP. So, it can either become weaker and weaker or baka magkaroon siya ng little breather na bumawi siya kahit pa paano. All right? Pero, when it comes to GDP, talagang there's no definitive um, decision sa economical market niya until magkaroon sila ng Brexit deal. Yung talaga makapag-deal sila sa European Union na ano yung pinaka-final deal. Pero until then, sobrang magulo ang market ng GBP. Okay? So sa mga mag-trade ng GBP, try to avoid yung may mga ganyang major news kasi it makes the market sobrang volatile. Alright? If you're gonna trade, try sa umaga or talagang no heavy news. Okay? Let's see. Friday, Canada. Okay, so so like I said, yung Canada kasi, yan yung medyo steady currency kumpara sa iba. Pero late, ano kasi, last week, humina siya. Pero this employment and I'm unemployment rate, this could shift its direction. Kasi yun nga, pahina nga, pahina yung Canada. Dahil sa mga oil prices, sa may trade war, nararamdaman na nila. And although they're not gonna cut rate maybe this year or could be next year na yung cutting rate nila, pero like I said, there's no direction where the rate is going. Pero, ang uh, sa Canada, steady siya. Alright? Steady. As in, not so many news. And sa market, when there aren't any masyadong news sa isang country, which means there's not that much um, volatility. Pagka walang volatility, there isn't that much opportunity for day trading kasi, you know, you're not gonna see that much market movements. Pero, it's good sa mga swing traders natin yun. Alright? So, other than that, uh, let's take a look at the chart. Let's see where, okay, uh, new share. So, my chart tayo. Okay, so chart. This morning, meron tayong mga Monday gap na nagkaroon ng gap sa market. It looks like na-close siya. So, sa mga those who knows Monday gap is, kasi ang Forex, nagkakaroon ng mga gap sa mga niyan. And usually, the gap closes within the day or within the week. The only time na hindi siya maka-close within the week is kung may mga talagang sobrang heavy news na that could define talagang yung sang, anong direction where the market will go. But this morning, we had an opportunity for a Monday gap and boom! 74 pips opportunity. Namiss ko yan kasi pagod ako. Pagod kami from coming from Davao and I forgot that it was gonna be a Monday. Weird, no? Talagang mawaforget ko pa na Monday. Kaya yun. Anyways, let's look at other opportunities. And right now, I'm using the 15, 30, 55 or the support and resistance. And the reason why I like to use this is because kasi since tagalid ng market, like right now, there's no sense of direction where all the market is heading to kasi ang daming, sobrang daming negative in all countries. Eh. Talagang global, ano talaga, according to mga news, talagang global economic slowdown. So lahat nag struggle Kaya... Sa mga ganitong moments, talaga ang mga currencies na naglalaban-laban yan. So, ang masarap gamitin na strategy dito is yung support and resistance. Kasi it's just gonna play up and down, up and down ang mga price. Kasi it's not like we know that some currency is so strong na alam natin na it's gonna go into one direction. Pero since the market is tagilid or sideways, best strategy to use is this. Oh look, an opportunity oh. Pwede tayo mag-sell dito. Sell tayo dyan, no? It's a 31 pip opportunity sa Euro AUD. So, so letting you know, medyo mahina ang euro versus sa AUD kasi nga, ano, medyo mahina ang AUD versus sa euro kasi nga nagkat nga sila ng rate last week. And so far, puro negative news. So this can possibly go up to reach yung daily R2 natin, then tsaka siya mag-reverse for a breather. Pero let's look at the overall picture naman. Go in natin H4. So as you can see, mukha siyang pataas. Pataas siyang ganun, no? Kasi nga, mahina nga yung ano ito. Pero it may need some breather. So this may go up over here. Then it may go down. We will see. Alright? Pero sa mga traders natin dyan, pwede kayong makisabay doon. Alright? NZD Canada. Let's see. Oh. Sa gitna, medyo tulog pa kasi market is. Only 1.44pm ng hapon. Di pa bukas ang Europe market or German market. AUD Canada, mukhang maririch na dito yung first support. It's an opportunity for ilang pips. 20 pips. Alright? So, pabagsak kasi nga mahina nga AUD and malakas ang Canada compared sa AUD may go down to 
support 3. But since it's a Monday, very unlikely. Okay? Unless merong pop-in news bigla. Canada JPY, same scenario. Medyo very silent yung market. Pero nagkaroon nga tayo ng gap dito. Kaya siya is keeping going. AUD and ZD, nahit na yung support. And this is a opportunity for 20 pips. So mga gustong takers dyan, pwede tayo mag-buy dito. Since AUD and NZD is working hand-in-hand, ang ugali niya typically is up and down, up and down. As you can see naman sa mga previews, ano. Kaya, kaya nangyari pabagsak na to kasi nga nag-cut rate ang AUD. Pero since yun, nakakapas na yung event na yun, it's gonna be a very up and down moment. And if you look at the overall picture naman sa so weekly candles, uh, let's take a look. Talagang ang ugali ng AUD at NZD, talagang up and down, up and down siyang ganun. Okay? So, H4, let's take a look. Yep. So, AUD, NZD, very good to use support and resistance. Alright? NZD, JPY, na-reach na kanina maga. First thing in the morning, 6 a.m. Na-reach na kagad yung daily S1. And look, not only na-close na yung gap, but at the same time, sa so, mga gumisi na maga, nag-profit sila ng 25 pips. Ayan, AUD, JPY, moving on. Same scenario, pero mukhang hindi pa nakaklose yung gap. So, hmm, since sobrang hina kasi yung AUD, the gap, actually, parehas, pati nga JPY, mahina rin eh. So, this can close probably mamaya pagbukas ng US market, Euro market, we never know. Okay? So, yeah. Another opportunity right here. And kung nag-buy ka kanina rito, could have been a 25th opportunity as well. GBP and ZD, boom, medyo flatline tayo dyan. <laughs> Although may gap, flatline. GBP AUD, huh, mukhang consistent siya pataas. Malaban yung GBP kahit despite sa mga negative news. See, even though na sobrang daming uncertainty sa England dahil nga sa Brexit, talaga lumalaban pa rin yung GBP. Ito yung ano, currency na very ano siya, politically driven currency. Kasi di ba, usually yung mga currencies, ano, mukha ng iba talaga nag-realize sa mga economic news, sa mga economic data, mga ganon. Pero ang GBP, kung ano sabihin ni Boris, talagang it goes one way or another. So very politically ano siya, reliant. Okay, so sa mga political news, kung nag-trade kayo ng GBP, keep that in mind, alright? GBP, JPY, and there was a gap again, gap again this morning. Sayang, nagasing na ako ng mga bandang 8. Kaya na-miss natin yung 50 pip opportunity na yan. Ganda sana. And, yep. GBP Canada, flatline. So, mamaya, um, probably tomorrow morning, gonna update everyone again kung there's other opportunities. So, sa mga traders, hintay na lang kayo ng mga until 3 p.m. and above to see some more activities in the market on Mondays. And, to maximize the market activity, wait until 9 p.m. and above. Kasi, dyan magubukas yung biggest economy in the world, which is the U.S. market. And dyan tayo magkakaroon ng mga entry point for buy or sell position sa mga support and assistance natin. Pero one thing to keep in mind is Euro AUD. May, may opportunity tayo dyan. And, uh, ito ba isa? Kanina. Uh, taga lang. <laughs> yung AUD and ZD. All right, because these can reverse when the euro market opens. All right, so like I said, guys, if you guys have any usual questions, just comment down below or yun lang, comment down below, and then you know, I'll try to answer it if I have time. Because whenever I'm in a trading session, talagang hindi ko kaya ng sagutin ng mga question, you know, I have to focus in the market, but don't worry, in my Facebook group. We do have other admins who can also help everyone kung mga tanong kayo on, on the market and everything. Kasi, you know, I'm working with very smart, na very reliable team naman that they're always there to back me up. So like I said, I cannot cater to everyone's needs. So sorry ko doon makakapag-reply sa mga messages nyo. At least I'm letting you know right now na pagka trading mode ako, I cannot multitask. Okay? So that's it for today and hope everyone have a very profitable week all right thanks for watching